Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is May 17th, 2022. This is episode 505. Today we're looking at Devil's Highway. This is actually volume 2, but one of five, so it's the first in volume 2. I didn't realize this was a second volume on here. I probably wouldn't have bought it because... Last time I did that by accident, but volume two, starting with volume two, I didn't know what was going on. This actually is, explains pretty well what's going on. This is an Awa Upshot. It comes in at a $3.99, a whopping $3.99. And take a quick look at the cover here. We've got this American flag with this snake eating its tail. Uh, this is a symbol for this evil organization within here. And there's kind of a, a woman's face in the background. I don't know if you can really see that very well. It's kind of impressed there. So, all in all, oh, an okay cover. I'm not really crazy about it, but oh well. Okay, let's take a look to see who worked on this real quick. Zoom down on here. We've got Benjamin Percy as the writer. The colorist is Nick Philadar Philardi. I think that's right. Um, the artist is Brent Shunover, and he's also the cover artist here. And Sal Cipriano is the letterer. Mark Diodato Jr. is the uh, has one of the variant covers, and also Lee Lowridge is also variant cover. And then there was an exclusive variant cover, Javon Jordan. So we'll see if those are in the back here. I can't remember if they were or not. So, Devil's Highway, the volume one, from what I can ascertain from this story, is the road that crosses from Mexico into the U.S., so we're smuggling people in or trafficking them for nefarious reasons. The people on there may maybe not thinking that, but they are being used. I'm guessing that's what the whole thing is. For volume two, they are coming down from Canada into the U.S., so we've got that much going on, so let's take a quick look at this book. So it starts off, we got the semi full of people, and it turns out these two at least are a Russian trying to sneak in from Canada into the U.S. You can see we're getting close here, and the mother's telling the daughter in Russian, they, they've kind of translated it for us, thank you very much, that uh, if something should happen, but I promise it won't, but if something should happen, just run. So the truck goes ahead and pulls off onto a dirt road and I guess crosses into the US. And then we cut to this person here. Um, she's taking a bath with her clothes on, but apparently she's doing drugs and, or prescription drugs at least, and booze and cigarettes and whatnot. And she's on the her laptop for some reason. I guess she's some kind of investigators from what I can gather from here. I just don't know the character that well. Then her friend comes in. Uh, she pulls a gun on him but realizes who he is. And uh, they go ahead and uh, start talking. He says, well, I want you to go. I'm, you know, I'm sorry to see you're, you're using again because apparently he's been clean for a couple months. Um, he's a former FBI agent. And I'm assuming maybe either an investigator or undercover. I'm not sure. It's not really disclosed in here. We just know they used to work for the Bureau. So, I don't know if they ever give her name in here. Let me see if I can see that here. It just says he called her, tried to... Uh, yeah, it never really says what her name is. But um, he tries to convince her, that, like, okay, I'm not here to bust you out the drugs. I actually have to talk to you about something that's been found. And uh, he says, tells her to get dressed. So her name is never disclosed as far as I know. His is Skinner. Okay. So they take off in their Camry. They are in Minnesota, Cook County, 30 miles south of the U.S.-Canadian border. So they, those bodies actually made it down there. They show up at a police scene. Apparently a sheriff, Riff, I believe that is his name, as a contact, is a contact. They've worked together with Skinner before. And he's going to, he called him on this and said, hey, you should come down here and see this. And, and there's all these bodies that are laying out in the field there. You can see people in hazmat. They're trying to figure it out. And in the meantime, I guess we find out Skinner has some special abilities because he can tell that 
the sheriff here is sick. And um, he, he asked him, well, if, since you know I'm sick, I've got cancer, can you tell me how it's going to be? And he goes ahead and pulls out some, I guess, tarot cards and has the sheriff pick one. And the guy just says, yes, it's a good one. You'll probably be okay. And then uh, one of the people in the hazmat suits comes running up. He's all beat up. Apparently, he told the girl, whoever her name is, to stop. But um, we still don't know her name. <laughs> Maybe it was said somewhere here. I don't remember seeing it. Um, they Here's the pattern of the bodies that they were found. And it turns out they were in that tractor trailer. Now, she finds the uh, teddy bear and realizes there was probably a child with him as well. They also notice it's got that strange snake insignia on it. There's there's the um, thing. So some kind of ritual happened here. They're not sure. The Skinner assumes that it is not some kind of Judeo-Christian type demon thing. It's some other something else going on with this. The last time this happened, they had pulled the... Um, the teeth out of the victims and also chopped off their hands for identification because they'd used sex workers. But these people were immigrants. They had no records with them. So they just went ahead and left them as is. So our friend here goes off in the woods. I still don't know what her name is. Maybe it's, I don't know. But um, she finds there's a camera put on, on the... Um, tree here so they find out they, they find out the person discovered all the bodies is a survivalist he's wants to, he's kind of a loner he wants to be left alone so they're going to go talk to casey spencer and they creep up a pretty nice house for a survivalist i would think it'd be a little bit more uh um cabin like this has got that big workshop and everything there but as it's becoming dusk, they're walking up, and he comes out and stops them, actually fires off his weapon. Um, but they continue to come up, and she jumps him and gets the gun away. And it turns out the little girl that was in the beginning is at the house. So, um, that, uh, yeah. That's, so they're going to try to figure out where to go from there. Now we go back to Washington, D.C. to the Bureau, and uh, this one agent tells Solin, Agent Solin, I believe his name is, tells his boss that he has gotten a call that uh, perhaps Sheriff Rift found out something about the bodies, and the, his supervisor dismisses him and then feeds his pet rattlesnake here. And while the snake is eating, he goes into this the terra terrarium and pulls out a cell phone and makes his call to that secret organization there. So that's where it ends. Um, they think they might have a problem. Uh, so five issues. It's going to move pretty fast. This first issue didn't give me a, as much story as I'd liked. But we know that the evil organization is in deep on this one so let's take a quick look to see if we they have any of the covers on here nope oh here we nope that's not it i'm sorry so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things that were in here real quick there's something called eter so uh Issue number two on sale June. I guess issue number one came out either this month or the previous months. If you're into that. Yeah, Awa Upshot, like um, some of the other comics, they go ahead and they put the uh, ads right in the middle here. Here's one called Hit Me, issue number three. I actually reviewed it, issue number one, and it was a, a not recommend. This is Krista Faust writing on this with... Art by Priscilla Paratis. Okay. Then we have HL Hotel Hell. Um, this one's been around for a while. I don't know if those trade paperback ad here for this one. John Lee's. Okay. And moving on. Let's see if we can find another. Primos. 
Al Madrigal is working on this one. Gina Caliente, there you go, Javier Regia and Gina. I'm not sure what they are about. Four issue series, and that's issue number four is out, or is coming out on May 25th. Knighted, Heroes Never Die. And finally, we got a few more back here. Okay, I guess this is the cover for the second issue, issue number two. Goes on sale June 15th. I'm going to give this a recommend for now. It was, just, it was pretty solid. I mean, I, I didn't love it. I was a little disturbed they didn't get disturbed. I was a little disappointed that they didn't give us a little bit more of a story in the front. They seemed to spend a lot of time in the hotel room at the beginning, which I guess was supposed to be character building. But for a second volume, I think they could have sped that up a little bit and give us a little bit more story. That would have been interesting. And uh, the art in it was okay, of course, too. As you can see here. So we get it. We get this blurb from the uh, the writer and the artist. If you want to, I don't know if you can read that. If you want to pause your computer, I don't think you can read it on the phone. And there's from the artist. You get the full thing here. Coming up next month, they're showing a little bit of the action scenes with Skinner running in and police cars and our shaved side of the head hero. And more from Benjamin Pierce. He also worked on Year Zero that came out from Awa Upshot, as you can see here, and Devil's Highway Volume 1. Da -da -da. Okay. New Think 1.0, a five-issue series. Issue one goes on sale June 1st, and this is Hurwitz and Diodato doing the writing and art on it. And this is what came out this month from Awa Upshot. Hit Me, Jones's. I, there was Jones's ad in there, and we skipped it. Primos, and of course, Devil's Highway 1 of 5. Volume 2, which we just reviewed. So thank you for stopping by and watching this video comic book review on YouTube of The Devil's Highway, issue number 1, volume 2. As always, please like, please subscribe if you haven't. Please leave comments, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. This is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.